Hi guys, once again, here we are, the directors. This time in this episode, we're gonna talk about animation from our own ideas and how we transmitted it to all the animators we worked with, a bunch of talented people all over the world. And uh, so it was pretty much fun. <laughs> so stay tuned for more. So when we came up with the idea for the film, uh, we had some premises that uh, we wanted to keep uh, along the film and one of those premises was to have a simple story, something that could be understood from a kid to a grown-up uh, and to have no dialogues. So this way we had to put all our efforts in the animation. Uh, so we have some subtleties and some details in the, the animation that uh, tell the story in a more profound way without having the characters speaking. As Guilherme said, we really wanted to like pay an homage to all our reference that we had from 2D animations like Roger Rabbit and Bugs Bunny and all those that were just filled our memories as a child. So, And most of us can relate uh, to that. And in these animations, you barely have no dialogues. You just have some sound effects, of course. And in our case, it's not just a random mix of acting, animation, just that. We have like really special emotions, small details. So all the animation, and we really stressed about the tiny details like eyes and stuff like that, that could decide whether the guy is good or whether the guy is evil. And uh, so it's not just bah, 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 and quick stuff and done. So I think we, we pushed ourselves in writing and then tried to, to convey everything in animation and we think we, we pretty did a good job, so. They said they wanted to, uh, well, they gave some references for really um, twisted animation from the past that I love, all the squash and stretchy, the Looney Tunes style animation, so I was really Looking forward to getting into the project and translating those mainly 2D ideas into these 3D characters in uh, Cinema 4D. Yeah, so this is my first time using Cinema 4D. It's always uh, interesting moving over into a new uh, piece of software. For an animator, once you uh, figure out the timeline and how to set keyframes, it's, uh, you're away, really. So, yeah, it was uh, no, no big deal. Since this was our first short film, um, we knew uh, in the beginning that it wasn't going to be like this very linear process. We couldn't simply prepare perfect layouts for the animators to just jump in and do whatever they wanted. And, uh, the reverse wasn't doable uh, as well, so so we came up to the animators uh, and and just said, okay, guys, we need space to make all kind of mistakes. Okay, you make some animation, some first blocking. We'll see. We'll try to put some cameras and we'll go and refine that process. Because in the end, after you make two or three errors and mistakes, something beautiful will come up out of that. And this was really not only beneficial in terms of quality in the, in the end animation, but also in terms of the, the processing and the process of all this. Mm. I think it was great. Yeah, and in the end we came up with great surprises because yeah, the yeah. animators did something that we wasn't expecting. And yeah, they would come up with uh, certain animations uh, completely different from what we had scripted and we just looked at it, oh my god, oh, this is even better. Yeah, even better. <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is Francesco Giuliano and uh, I'm a FXTD for Don't Feed This Animal project. When Guilherme and Madayu first approached me, uh, they gave me a, a very early stage animatic, which was basically a, a very cool cartoon but still pretty much all drawn. And so I was I was very interested because it was something uh, very unusual for a company this small. And uh, 
you know, I decided to give it a go and they sent me a file and I started working on it and suddenly I understood that it was much more complicated than it looked and uh, it really grabbed me so I wanted to go forward. So I asked for references, for things to do, and they gave me uh, dark cartoons references, normal cartoons references, and then real references. And the cool thing about this is it's still an animated feature short, but in a way they wanted some real visual effects like the ones you can see in feature films and it gave me the opportunity to work on some very unusual effects that you can have in cartoons, you know, because you can do whatever you want and still remaining uh, tied to what's real. Uh, you know, everybody had the, the freedom to actually experience some, some kind of uh, proper work and at the same time put something of, of their own you know, in, in, in what's the director's vision. So we all contributed to this um, in a creative way. And it's, it never feels like, um, you know, this or that is never gonna make it into the shots, you know. It's, it's just, it's, it's like everyone is working together and actually contributing to the bigger picture. Even in the writing process, we really wanted to, to be clear on the emotions that we wanted to convey. Uh, so it was a back and forth uh, process uh, because the animators needed to understand what we wanted and they did a great job in doing that. Um, yeah, we, we found a great way to transmit the, the feeling that we wanted. Yeah. With the references, we found ourselves shooting, mainly Miguel. <laughs> Uh, and I think that was crucial for, to get what we want because we don't have motion capture. This is all done by hand. So filming Miguel was really nice and we, <laughs> we, achieved, yeah, we achieved funny movements and funny reactions from that. And the animators, uh, when they saw the, those references, they were, yeah, this is what you want. Yes, man, that's what we want. And Thanks for this. Hello, my name is Sebastião. I'm an animator here uh, at Nebula, working on uh, Don't Feed These Animals. It's been a real pleasure to work with the directors. They uh, really understand the animation process, so they help a lot the animators with bringing references and their, their visions to the character. So we work together, really together, and, uh, and uh, accomplish what they, what they want to, for the character, for their character. For us animators, it's been uh, as well very easy to work with the rigging team uh, because we can uh, ask them for any changes we need in the rigs and um, uh, to enhance our animations. And it, cinema brings uh, a lot of good tools uh, regarding rigging such as the deformer tools. Uh, they, work, they are very easy to work with, uh, they deliver what we usually want, and so the results are much, much better in, in animation. Hello, my name is Eric Diaz, and I am an illustrator and 2D animator for the chart Don't Feed These Animals. In this project, I was responsible for translating the concept arts of our main character Lobo, made by José Alves da Silva, into illustrations and animations meant to be used as texture for 3D objects, visual effects, and also on our behind-the-scenes videos. To achieve a good result, I had to research and suit the character. So I went to José portfolios and downloaded every drawing he made of Lobos so I could learn about his anatomy and range of motion. This way, I could understand how his body would react to, to movement. For example, if it would squash or stretch over a fall or an impact. And also, it helped me uh, while drawing and posing the rabbit for illustrations. When I started making digital illustrations on my Wacom Bamboo, I had some troubles at first. 
because while working on paper, I was used to look directly to the area where I was drawing, which was not possible uh, with the tablet because uh, what, while I was drawing on it, I had to keep my eyes on the screen. Over time, I got used to it, but when I first put my hands on Cintiq, I could remember how comfortable and natural it feels to draw, looking directly to where the pen is pointing. And also, the display has an amazing resolution, allowing me to handle the finest details, especially when considering its sizes, which gave me room to organize my work. So in the end, we came up with pleasant surprises, uh, like the animators brought us some gags and funny stuff that we weren't expecting, uh, like we, we didn't uh, script it, yeah. and they, ca they came out great and we used it in the film, and yeah, I think it was this a process, match. yeah, it worked in that sense. It's, it's been a pleasure for me to work on this project. Uh, it's been very uh, challenging because we are uh, only a few, we are a small team and we want it to be the best it can be. Work aside, um, it's been a very different, uh, different experience in terms of the, the people with you actually work every day. I feel it uh, much more friendly and uh, you can really relate to the others in a, in a very personal way. Uh, as soon as you get to know people and as soon as you bond with people, uh, your work connects much better instantly. Working with this team and with these characters has, uh, has kind of reignited my passion for animation. I mean, I've always been passionate about animation all my life, but working with these characters, it's, it's, been, it's been great fun and I'm going to miss it. So that's it for now for this episode of Animation. Don't miss the next one, it will be about Render Pipeline. And that's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs>